Hey, welcome back to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. My mic was really far away for a second. <laughs> welcome back. Thank you for tuning in, watching, or listening, doing it however you're doing it, where you're doing it. Cool. Guys, as always, these episodes are sponsored by our good friends over at Cardsphere.com, the best place, in my opinion, to buy, sell, and trade magic cards. Go there, check it out. Their link is in the description below. Really, really easy to use and really fun. Uh, Agreed. We're going to jump right in, guys. Why Random not? card of the day time in three, two, one. Flame Wave Invoker. This is from Legions. Yeah. <laughs> and 10th edition. Yep, that too. So it is a 2-2 two, two for 3, 2 colorless, 1 red, with an ability, <laughs> 7 colorless, 1 red. Flame Wave Invoker deals 5 damage to target player. So that's Lava Axe on a stick, but for way more. Well, 2 more, but... Um, weirdly, I like this card in draft. I do. I like it in draft as well. Um, Only in draft, just yes. to clarify. Yes. Oh, well, um, okay. Can you see a case... <laughs> Bear with me now. Do you <laughs> I'm see, trying. Do you see a case for Commander where you can make unlimited mana? I think there are better things to do with unlimited mana than a Flame Wake Invoker. And to kill someone instantly? I think, well, it's not instant, though. You have to get through multiple activations, and they can easily, easily deal with a 2-2 creature. I mean, sure. really easily. But if they can I mean, if they can't, sure, but like... I'm just saying, in, ter in, in Commander, when you have, where you have one of cards, and you want to just... Burn their go face. all in on this. I mean, not sure. necessarily this, but just like damage on the strategy yeah. of like damage. If you make unlimited mana and put it into X spells, this is just essentially an X spell. I mean, sure. I in a way, yeah. I I get and, where you're coming from. And <laughs> this is an X spell with multiple activations in Commander, where you only have one of. I mean, that's fair. I just think it dies way too easily. Oh. 100 <laughs> percent it's a 2-2 two -two creature in commander yeah the laser dragon format <laughs> like he is super fragile he's a glass cannon that's what yeah I'm no say. that's exactly what he is he is so the reason not to harp off of commander but going to draft really quick the reason i like this it's a 2-2 two -two for three not amazing but he has late game re relevance and for so sure. the idea is he's a mana sink mana sinks are always just like kind of good to have one or two of in your deck Depen in depends on the effect but depends yeah. on the effect but like it's nice to have something like that because you'll find that a lot of later turns in draft uh you just won't have much to do and this yep. sometimes can give you an out to like either win or you know at least deal a good bit of damage yeah for um, sure. so that's draft commander i don't know i think yes you run it but like it's not look it's not ideal <laughs> but that's the that's the format for janky you're right you know, you're right. It's plays. I mean, that's. I'm that not saying it is the most efficient way to kill somebody, but if I've got <laughs> unlimited mana at my disposal, it would be nice to have one. I'm gonna make them have the thing. Yeah, you no, know make what I'm them saying? have it. That's fine. You just target the most uh, vulnerable player first, who may or may not have an answer, and then you move on from there. That is fair. Like, think about think about the ceiling, Kevin. If no one has a response, <laughs> talk about the ceiling. <laughs> if no one has a response, that's game done. That is fair. Look, I'm with you. I just don't that's think it's very argument. good. That's all. <laughs> that is very good. Is it risky? Absolutely. Yeah, that's why I don't think it's. It's very boom good. or bust. But I think in commander, play it. You've got 98 other spots. Like that's fair. Why not? Why not? You know what I mean. That's what. That's our question to you. Why not? Tell us why. Heck yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it's fine. It's cool. Anyway, moving on. Look, <laughs> I don't know why you don't think that's worth playing. I just think, like, a lot of times it's going to be a dead card. The reason I say this, it's a turn three sure. card, right? Ideally, mm -hmm. you want to play mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. on curve. It will die. If you play it early, it's most likely going to die before you can even trigger its ability. Well, who's going to target Flame Wave Invoker? Who doesn't see that card and thinks, okay, this clearly is not part of their win. This is clearly not going to what not going to be what they use their infinite mana for. So why would they remove it then? No, I'm saying sarcastically. They oh, would think I that. Um, they would think that. And so you kill it yeah. like immediately. On top of that, late game, you would have to 
the only way I can think of it as being like really good is if you generate the infinite mana first, play him, and then use his ability the exact same turn. Because if he sticks around for a turn or two, I don't think he would live. But there you go. Why not? I mean, that's fair in that situation. If you're the fine. if you're the fourth player on the like <laughs> clock, it's even better because everyone's out, everyone else is tapped out. I I think that's a fair argument, but I don't think it's a good card. <laughs> It's worth playing. Okay. I don't know why you don't think that's <laughs> worth playing. You tell us. In a very specific. Very specific. <laughs> not even, though. If you have the combo, which there exists a squeak combo that you can easily put in Commander. Yeah. Def- I mean, uh, there no, are plenty no, no, of... No, I lied. But you there are plenty be, of infinite it. mana combos. Yeah, no, the squeak the squee one doesn't work. I'm thinking of ones in red, though. There are multiple. In red? I believe so. Well, I guess you would have to use the old squee. No, because they changed the legendary rule. Dang. Um, I have to think of one for red. I mean, you could put it in red blue. That yeah, I mean, you can mix but, and match, but like, yeah, I, I think works. it's fine. It's just not amazing. That's all. I think you run it. I just don't think it's very good. <laughs> all right. I think the potential to win instantly is. It's a good are, budget way to do it. Yeah, heck yeah. It's a great budget way to do it. I mean, there you go. It's faster than Splinter Twin, Kevin. <laughs> it is! I mean... <laughs> Tell me it's not. I don't think it is. Is it? It's definitely totally. not. Splinter Twin you do on turn four. Well, yeah, but they kill your... They could, I mean, it's, it's got the same weakness. They just kill the dude before they put it down. But it's also faster. No, it's not. Splinter Twin is faster. Oh, well, no, because you do need the combo. Yeah, yeah. and they, they get haste, right? Yeah, you do it. I'm on the thinking turn. of like optimal turn. So I mean, like you, you pester get the mana. at the end of turn three, on the end of their turn three, and then on your untap on they get that haste. next turn, your turn they four. Yeah. Right. I was thinking of like you can do little seven mana shooty dude combo. <laughs> the turn you get in like in one turn. I thought Splinter Twin needed to, but, but you still haste. also need yeah the other pieces to they that combo. Haste. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I don't. I just think it's okay. I don't think it's amazing. Um, Fine. let's talk about Guilds of Ravnica again. <laughs> uh, so as we mentioned uh, last week, uh, we went over what spoilers we had. We've obviously gotten a large, not a large, a grouping of new ones that we are pretty excited about that uh-huh. we wanted to talk about. We also have a deck idea in mind already we for do. this, we do. Uh, which we'll get into later. But we wanted to talk about some specific cards. Do you want to kick us off, Will? Uh, yes. So. <laughs> if you would go to the top. Uh, These are all the newest ones. I just, you do whatever you want. Thank you. There you go. Uh, so, we have a new kind of Wrath of God effect coming to us. Deafening Clarion? Clarion? Whatever. Yeah. Uh, something like that. So, uh, deals three damage to each creature. Choose one or both, by the way, for three. Deals three damage to each creature, or creatures you control gain lifelink until end of turn. I mean... It's Boros Anger of the Gods or Sweltering Suns, basically. Yeah, that's what I meant. Anger of the Gods. It's really good. Not Wrath of God. I like it. Uh, yeah, you don't care about the lifelink. No. Really, I don't think, but... Probably not. Um, but I do really like this. I think it's sweet. It's Sweepers, which yeah, Sweepers I are think always it's, great. So. I think it's fine. I mean, we saw Anger come in and be in multitude of decks, so yeah. I think it... And Sweltering Suns also in standard has been really good. Even not even just in standard in modern. Uh, it's it's it been hit, like living in baby. I it's been decent. Yeah, yeah. It has been decent. It's been fine. Uh, yeah. So I mean, this is I mean, this, that's just nice to see. That yep. slows down the uh, red game's potential. Yes. It gives mono white kind of a uh, fighting chance. I'll say. Mm-hmm. Well, not not mono white because I mean splash, Boros, but but yeah, it gives the white aggro decks that kind of have a skeleton mm-hmm. a fighting chance against your red decks uh next one was <laughs> march of the multitudes i love this card this one is I like this. yeah it's interesting though um so do you think it's constructed viable or just limited i think potentially constructed viable the reason i say that is because you have um obviously this is a later game sort of finisher kind of thing mm-hmm. in my mind 
uh, because you can just bulk out. So for anybody that doesn't know, it's X, a green, and two white for an instant with Convoke. Uh, you mm -hmm. create X, one, one white soldier creature tokens with lifelink. Uh, very reminiscent of Secure the Waste, which is uh, a great card. This is obviously a little more expensive, but you do get Convoke. Uh, and so with things like Land War Elves that are going to generate you some mana, uh, any other just like token strategies where you can tap all of the tokens you already have to get even more tokens, mm -hmm. like it's going to be pretty big. Like it's pretty sweet. Yeah, I think a like... Th uh what am I saying? March and then March again. Yeah, that's it. holy crap. That's the dream. <laughs> like, <laughs> is this the is this the big boy word? Is that exponential tokens? That's, is that how that would be? Sure. Is that an exponential? We'll amount? go with that. I believe so. I math once. No, because yeah, if you do it yeah. for five, next turn you tap all five tokens to get ten. Yes, ish. In theory, in theory, you have to have the mana. Obviously, you have to have the mana. But in theory, yeah, yeah it's exponential growth. Uh, it's really, really powerful. I mean, yeah, it's a bunch of one ones. But if you have enough one ones, that's all you need. So. I keep circling the cursor around a part in the screen. Do you see what what I'm circling? Do you know? You? Do you know what that is? No. You might not care. <laughs> what is it, Kevin? Specifically, but in the card art for March of the Multitudes, there is uh, a little Easter egg to return to Ravnica. Really, our boy. What is it? I can't see it. It's Fibblethip. 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 Why don't I remember what Fibblethip is? From Totally Lost. Oh. <laughs> is that really? Yeah, it's Fibblethip. Oh my gosh, it is. That's amazing. Yeah, dude. I did not know that. That's really cool. Lost in the streets, but not lost in our hearts. <laughs> Fibblethip. What a cool little character. Um. <laughs> yeah, he's the best. Yeah, I like him. He's my favorite magic character. Is he really? He's yeah. pretty sweet. Um, he does. I mean, he's never been a card, but no, he's been. He should featured. be. He just he struck a chord. Well, well, scared homunculus, dude. It just reminds me of a uh, Full Metal Alchemist. That's all. Just because it's homunculus, the dwarf in the flask specifically. Oh, all right. No, I, I mean they're I not like exactly that. the same, but like no. the single big eye kind of thing. If anybody hasn't watched that, you should probably go watch that. Um, specifically Brotherhood. No, watch them both. I mean, yeah, watch them both, but Brotherhood's better. Um, anyway, yes. yeah, I'm gonna talk about this card because sure. I really want to. Dream Eater, I freaking love this card. Um, okay, it is four and two blue for a flash flying four three nightmare sphinx. Yeah. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, surveil four, uh, and then when you do, you may return target non land permanent mm -hmm. and opponent controls to its owner's hand. This is insane. I love yeah. this card. So, breaking this down very quickly, it's a 4-3 flyer for 6. Decent, like not amazing. It's, okay. it's like okay. It's okay. Flash makes that way better. Uh, it yep. allows you to leave up anything on your turn that you need to play this either at the end of your opponent's turn, whatever. Uh, surveil 4, tons of extra value. Obviously, you're going to use the graveyard hopefully to your advantage, and so being able to throw up to 4 cards in there is fantastic. It's also going to dig through your deck, which is great. And you get to bounce a permanent on the yep. other side of the field. A non-land permanent, but let's be honest, that's all you need. It is so good. <laughs> like, there's just so much to do on this card. It's fantastic. Yeah, the more I think about it, I'm thinking about it in terms of the deck we're, we're kind of yeah, dreaming well, up. this is part of the I'll deck. Go, I'll go into that later. On the face of it, yeah, it's super powerful. Yeah. Um, it just does a lot. In terms of effects, and it does present quite a threat. Oh, yeah. Although it is weak. It is weak. It dies pretty easily. It dies uh, to, it quite dies a to bit. that board sweeper that you talked yeah. about. Um, it dies but, to quite a bit. Um, it's just it gives you so much value on the face of it that it's kind of okay if it dies. Like you don't want it to, but like it gets you through your deck a good bit and it tempos the opponent, which is kind of nice. I don't know for constructed if that's enough. Is the only thing I think at the end of your opponent's turn, it's worth it. At the end of their turn, yeah, because you're I gonna suppose. hopefully get at least a turn with this on on board, and I think that's a fair. swing in. You know I think that's I mean? fair, um, and for that reason, I think that's when you play it always. But I think it's really, really sweet. Yeah, it's great. Uh, also, the art's really good. I just see it as I put more stock into it initially than I than I had. I still uh, have a lot of stock into it. Oh, it's good. It's good. It just as a finisher, I don't think it works anymore. Um, just because it's too weak. It's a yeah, it's maybe. a tempo play for sure, but it's a really good tempo. The play. threat isn't as big as like some other stuff. That's fair. Does that make sense? No, definitely, because it does die too easily. But 
I think if you can get a turn, maybe even two in with this. Not to mention all the extra value, the ETB stuff. Like, yeah, that's the. It's worth it. Um, in my mind, surveil four is pretty big. Surveil yeah. four is great. Um, you see a big chunk. Yeah, I like it. Is undecided. Undecided. Fair enough. Undecided. Um, should we yeah go, go ahead and talk about this one? sure do okay it. so this is the card everybody is hyped about um, with i mean with good reason yeah. assassin's trophy so an instant yeah. for one black and one yeah. green yeah. destroy yeah. target yeah. permanent any permanent an opponent controls its controller may search their library for a basic land card put it onto the battlefield and shuffle their library so yeah obviously the downside here being that they get a basic land out darn uh destroy any permanent yeah holy crap this is uh, affectionately named the new Abrupt Decay uh, for good reason. It's better than Abrupt Decay. I think it replaces Abrupt Decay in a lot of situations. I don't um, see why not, to be uh, honest. The only thing I can think of is that it this can be countered while Abrupt Decay cannot. That's the only downside. But in a lot sure. of the decks where you would want Abrupt Decay, they probably wouldn't have a counter anyway. Against a lot of the matchups, yeah, yeah. Because um, against, like, a control deck, Abrupt Decay isn't that good. Like, it hits Snappy. That's about it. Yeah. And Vendillion Click and stuff. But, like, this hits any permanent. <laughs> any permanent. Uh, whereas Abrupt Decay is converted mana cost three or less. Again, it's, non -land. That, it's that ceiling floor debate. Yeah. Where Abrupt Decay's ceiling is three mana. Yeah. But this can hit anything. This yeah. just the potential to be countered. Yeah. I mean... I love this though. I think it's great. I do think it's better than Abrupt Decay for that reason because it I hits. I think so too. It hits any permanent in the game. Yeah. No, I think you're right. Yeah. I think it, it's it's so powerful. Any permanent. Yeah. That's just my. It's insane. I mean, you were mentioning this has uh, implications for some land destruction, land control decks. Uh, yeah. Like this, uh, in combination with things like Field of Ruin and everything, like you Field of Ruin all of their non-basic lands, and then you just use this on their basics. Yeah, um, and I, you're able to blow up, a, but it's like, it's slow. Yeah, best it's case, too slow. best case, you take them off a of color yeah. for a turn or two. Yep, maybe because they get to fetch. you stall them. Yeah, it's that's just kind of incidental, I think. Well, not incidental value, but it's it's not. But it opens that door up, whereas abrupt decay did not. It's like sprinkles. Yeah, for that deck, it's just sprinkles on top. With sprinkles. You want to go get ice cream after this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I thought you were going to offer me <laughs> sprinkles. Ice cream I'm all in for. Do you not like sprinkles? No. Like, what's the point? What? <laughs> yeah. There's, it's Have we had this conversation before? This no. Is really. Are you into sprinkles? Yeah, I like sprinkles. What's the point of sprinkles? They're just... It adds. Okay. It adds. <laughs> it doesn't add. Now, one cashew? <laughs> that adds. And some fish oil pills. Um. Okay. <laughs> So, <laughs> we'll go on to my... If any of you get that reference, please let us know in the comment section below. Uh, we'll go on to some green cards in the meantime, though. Uh, mono <laughs> green, they're just daring people to they play are, mono man. green. Like, the, the next two cards I've slotted to talk about are absurd. Um, <laughs> so, Nullhide Ferox is the next one. It is a 6-6 six, six beast for four. One more time. It's a 6-6 six, six for four with <laughs> Hexproof. With hexproof, <laughs> uh, it it says you can't cast non-creature spells. That is a downside. Darn. But for two, Nullhead Ferox loses all abilities until end of turn. Any player may activate this ability, uh, and then if a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard Ferox, put it onto the battlefield instead of putting it into your graveyard. So that's that. Um, um, he's got locks it on Smiter's effect. Yeah, back there. Uh, he's got a. Oh, yeah, okay. I was thinking of Hammer <laughs> Elephant Bro. Uh, so obviously this is pushed ish with like some insurance policy on yeah, Wizards yeah, End. Yeah. So it's got hexproof, yes. But effectively it should say like any spell that targets this creature costs two more to cast or yeah. something. Because yeah. there is that there is that option to remove hexproof, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um and the you can't cast non-creature spells takes it out of a lot of decks uh, yeah, that would like a beater, a 6-6 six, six beater. Yeah. Uh, we had thought to play this yep. in another deck <laughs> until we thought of all the issues. Um, so, uh, however, for a mono green, which plays 
from my understanding, my standpoint, very little non-creature spells. This is totally fine. Yeah. Uh, to have that power out on board, turn four is stupid. Well, even sooner than that, most likely. Turn three, potentially. Yeah. So our our curve has gone now. I've been evolving <laughs> our curve every like every time spoilers come out. Uh, land where else? Uh, Steely Champion. Nullhide Ferox, that's turn three. So we've got... Probably, yeah. If 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 Land of War is turn one. Again, yeah. with unmolested. Uh, it's a phrase. Look it up. Yeah. It is. No, it, I know it is. It's a, I'm agreeing know. with you. Just, anyway, turn and then four. That, uh, <laughs> that 10-10... Uh, Gigantosaur. Yeah, Gigantosaur. <laughs> turn four. Turn five, Galta. And Honestly, you can turn four Galta. You could at that point, if you had it, but like, <laughs> but you have options now. You're just putting out. You are throwing just. If this was not a family friendly ish podcast, so many phrases come to mind. Yeah. But you're just flopping everything on the table. Is how I'll say it. If you ever just wanted to beat face, now is the time. You have yes. so many options. Uh, what it was missing before. <laughs> That I was concerned about because we have beaters for days in green. Yeah. What it was missing was an engine of some kind. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, green doesn't really have card draw. Asterisk. Uh, <laughs> green doesn't really have get card advantage in any sort of way. It just puts power on the board and says, right. answer it or don't, and you lose. Yep. Uh, but we get Beast Whisperer, which is a 2 3 4 4. This is whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. Uh, you're going to be pumping out a lot of creatures gonna be drawing a lot of cards makes it worth it there is yeah. also the granted it's an enchantment so it doesn't work very well with the null hide but um there's the enchantment i believe from 2019 where if you play mm. a creature with power or toughness for a greater mm. you draw a card yep. something like that um yeah that certainly could apply in this too and i think it's cheaper than the null hide so like mm-hmm. in instead of like a lanoir elves or something if you had that go for it you know what i mean i think it's three or four so is yeah. it three I thought it was three. I thought it was. Anyway. That was two. It's good. Yeah. I thought it was cheaper. It might be two. Either way, it's really know. good. It's an engine for this. Um, so. Certainly. So, I mean, the the pieces are there. The question is always, green spot removal murders green. Like, yeah. 100%. No pun intended. But uh, the, the question is always, can it rebuild? And engines like Beast Whisperer, like that enchantment, are super necessary. Um, yeah. I think pieces are there for it to get out of hand yes shall we say no i definitely think so what was the next card uh district guide which one is district guide why do i not know uh this? it is is it the green one yeah the fetch is a gate so uh, yeah this card is sweet so we are i mean this is a limited bomb for, oh not bomb excuse me limited all-star for yeah. sure uh for a two two for three two colorless one green when district guide enters the battlefield you may search your library for a basic land card or gate card reveal it put it into your hand shuffle your library so they're playing again with gate mechanics. They printed a new gate, actually. No, oh, yeah, they did. Um, the all color. Yeah. yeah, just to add one more target, I guess, for this, just to add a little more mana fixing. It's Transco Promenade for the set, mm-hmm. um, which is fine for limited. Uh, which is where this would sit. This is mana yeah. fixing for limited, which is super necessary on a two-two on turn three in green. That's kind of there's usually one of those in a set for limited and and this is that one uh the reason i wanted to write it down is in return to ravnica we had uh which card was it you won if you played all the gates uh mazes in that's one that's the one mazes Uh, end is sweet it's not but it's fun no it's fun i love it (laughs) it's not it's uh it's kind of sweet it's not good but it's sweet if you can win with it that's amazing Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> I feel like I just insulted. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. I love when it. When the kids aren't watching. Um, <laughs> Maze's End is super jank. It's yeah. a turbo fog deck with, like, it plays lands. Oh, yeah. Which is super, it's, it's cool. It's a cool deck. It never wins. Uh, yeah. I don't know anybody who's lost to Maze's End. Uh, I have only seen it win like one or two games so i guess that's fair it's not very good right so um no because i mean obviously <laughs> we're not going to go into mazes and dead <laughs> uh however if mazes end was to 
be reprinted per se, which with cards like this, there's another blue enchantment that works with gates. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, why not? I mean, it'd be cute. Yes. You know what I mean? It would it'd be. be cute. You put a, a crucible in, and I mean, I I like it. Who I think knows? it's cool. Yeah, who but knows? it's it's not very good. Nope. <laughs> it's it's just fun. Nope. Uh, this is the card I was looking for. Cool. Ionize. Uh, I like this card a lot. This is very reminiscent of Counter Squall in my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, it is one, a blue, and a red for an instant counter target spell, and it deals two damage to that spell's controller. Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward counter spell, but it's obvious upside uh, for splashing that red. Mm -hmm. um, I think that this could have some implications in like America control decks and stuff. I don't think it's amazing because it's mm -hmm. a three mana counter. Right. Uh, but that incidental damage is really, really helpful when you're trying to burn the opponent out. Um, and so any little extra, oh yeah, you know, Colgon's command deals two damage, things like that. Those cards really, really do well. Adding two damage onto this, I think it's great. It's not something I'm super like super excited about, but like it's a really good just blue red counter spell. Yeah, so I think I'm it's fun. I it. think that uh, control shells in the future, uh, in the future standard seasons, yeah, as they begin to take shape, I think Ionize is going to be a a big player. I yeah. mean, it's. Uh, also worth That's noting, fine. Goblin Electromancer's in, so you can get this down to two. <laughs> but do you ever you, no, play you don't. <laughs> Electromancer? No, not with this. I'm just throwing out options. Nah, I you mean... Just do what you want to do. Um, unless it's a wizard? Is that... Other way. <laughs> other, other way. Is Electromancer a wizard? Because <laughs> there uh, is a wizard deck. Yeah, it is a wizard. Goblin wizard. Go up. Already passed it. Up, up, up. How? Oh yeah, Goblin Wizard. Yep. So, I mean, there is a Wizard Duck. Maybe. I don't know. Strong maybe. Yeah, it's a strong. I'm, maybe. I'm not gonna. Um, I don't necessarily think you put those two together. I just think that it's kind of in interesting. A, in a wiz, in the Wizard Deck, maybe. Maybe. I haven't spent time with it to know really for sure. <laughs> uh, this was an, an interesting card for me. Runaway Steamkin. It is interesting. Whenever you cast a red spell, if Runaway Steamkin has fewer than three plus one plus one counters on it, put a plus one plus one counter on Runaway Steamkin. Remove three plus one plus one counters from Runaway Steamkin, add three red mana. So I I always, whenever I see add mana and cast a spell yeah. printed on a card, I'm like, Storm. But... Mm. Storm slots are so cemented. Yeah. It's really hard to take anything out. However, I want to put this in. People will try to it. To make it work. I don't know if it's good enough, though. Here's the magic Christmas land. <laughs> um, the more... After your storm goes off is the only issue, is when this really pops off and gets crazy. Um... I mean, uh, do you see it? Yeah, because you cast the spells, remove the counter, add the mana, cast the spells. Yeah, like it just helps you smooth out the storm combo, right. basically. I mean, um, it, but I don't know that we even need that at this point. I mean, that's anything the, helps. That's the but thing. Like, that's the thing. Is it's. it's I'd like, rather just have Baral or Goblin. Electric you'd rather have Baral's? They just make everything cheaper. cheaper. I, yeah. Huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And like it's a passive thing, so it just that's always a thing, right? Which I really like, right? Right. Um, this is certainly, I mean, I could see it. You know what I mean? Like it's one of those that I question if it's good enough. Um, sure. So that was, but that was the first thought. I don't think it. I don't think it actually fits. Right. It's it's got like the trappings, but again, storm being so, it's we really, know the cards that go in storm, right? Yeah, There's yeah. no really. Mixing I mean, with that. The question in my mind is it better than either Goblin Electromancer or Brawl? Because you don't want to play any more creatures than that deck already has. I think it's better than Electromancer one. Uh is it better than Brawl? In that deck specifically is what I'm thinking. Because yeah, I that's think it is. like I don't you're know paying, if it is. You're paying three mana f no, Brawl's is two or three. Brawl's two. It's two. One and one blue for Brawl. Right. They're all two drops, just to clarify. Right. So it would fit in the same slot. Is the question is does it replace one of them? In my mind. Well, really, when do you when do you want to go off? Uh what Storm and Modern ideally turn three, I think is the general. The other thing to note with this, it adds red mana, not blue mana. That is important. 
True. Um, so your only wins become uh, gut shot or grave shot. That's what I meant. Gut yeah. shot. Empty the horns is the yeah. other. Like, right. yes, it's good because it adds free mana. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. No complaints there. But blue mana is really what you want because you only ever need like one red mana. Realistically. True. I mean, there's certainly implications where you could use more red mana, but like sure. generally speaking, you want extra blue. Yeah. Um, and so not tapping blue lands by mm-hmm. having like a brawl out or a goblin electromancer where everything's cheaper, that seems better to me. Yeah. Um, but I might be wrong by all means. I'm okay with that. Again, I don't really think so. I just think it's it's interesting to see what it would do to the deck. If you can make that work. So, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, in my mind, you storm off once in some way, whether it's Empty the Warrens or, or uh, Grape Shot mm-hmm. with Runaway Steamkin, get all that extra mana and then do it again with an Empty the Warrens or a, or a whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sold, like I said. But I don't know yet. The other, the other deck I had in mind for oh. this one um, is not in standard. It's It would be Burn. So interesting in burn this just kind of fits into a more aggressive slot uh, you get it up to a uh a four four becomes a beater and yeah. then if it would die for any reason if it is a four four remove the counters you have extra mana to cast burn spells for free if you want the only problem i see with that is by the time you would remove the counters your hand is going to be light oh sure Sure, sure, sure. You know what I mean? That's like, just kind of an insurance policy. If you, th- incidentally, if you have it, if it is dying, to give burn kind of more more body. So again, the question becomes: What do you take out from red deck wins to right. put this in? And is this mm-hmm. better than whatever you're taking out? Right. I mean, the creatures in that I think are all of them are better. Yeah. Uh, I so you take think, out burn spells. Um. Yeah, you really can't do that. I don't know. I don't think this would fit into Red Deck Wins, personally. I do think, like, Red Deck Wins gives you the best opportunity to, like, make this card work. Yeah. But this card doesn't really help Red Deck Wins that much. In terms of, like, I mean, I think it upping does. the pace Well, on that's Red it. Deck that's wins. it. The question is, does it help because more than Red, other cards? I mean, you're just trying to beat face as quick as possible. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I do, I mean, you're right. Like, I like the, as you said, the insurance policy of, like, having mm-hmm. extra mana. Um, but generally speaking, you don't need extra mana in a red deck wins. Like, you're going to be able to play all of your stuff because everything right. costs, like, one. <laughs> right. Maybe two. Like, w- yeah. You know what I mean? Two like, at the top end. If you, if you put Bethlehem Reveler in, which not many decks do. Not, but. yeah, not in red deck. So. Some do. Some do, but. Not any that it's, I've seen in a top eight, at least. No, yeah, there was, uh, yeah, there have been some. A Bedlam Reveler? Mm-hmm. In a top eight red deck wins? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Why? <laughs> I feel like it would be better in not red deck wins. I mean, I think it's fine, but like. I mean, for sure, but that's just, again. That's interesting. Late game. I mean, whatever. But, yeah, I, I don't know that you throw this in red deck wins. I, again, try it by all means. It's worth a shot. Yeah, I think it's I think it's interesting. Um it would work well. It just I don't know if it would up the pace. That's of the, deck. the thing is, is does it work better? Because you don't take out um Eidolons. You don't take out the most hated guard for you. Yeah, I don't you well, hate Eidolon. Just for that, those games we played, I don't I'm not a big fan of Eidolon anyway, no. Yeah, yeah. But um <laughs> it's because it ends up doing way more damage to you. You're ahead on life? Sometimes. Uh, ideally, most of the time. <laughs> ideally, but sometimes. Um, uh, so you don't take out Goblin Guide. You don't take out Swift Spear. No. You don't take out uh, Young Pyromancer. So what do you like, What do you take out? That's the thing. I don't think you do. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. That's the thing. Uh, We've been harping on this card. I think it's, it's cool, but it's not. I think it's. I think it's pretty good. Um, I think it's fine. I don't know if it's got a home in modern is the only thing, but I think it's pretty good. Um, so yeah, really quick, I want to talk about this card, uh, Goblin Crater Maker. Uh, so we talked last episode uh, about how goblins are most likely going to be a deck now. Uh, this just makes that easier to say. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a two drop two two uh, Goblin Warrior. You can pay one, sack it, and choose one. It deals two damage to target creature or destroys a colorless non land permanent. Yep. Um, 
really, really good, in my mind, for the Goblin deck. Yeah, for the uh, Goblin deck, definitely. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2. It can deal 2 damage. It gives you a sack outlet, so if somebody tries to remove it, you can just sack it in response. Yeah, you have to pay a mana, but your deck's going to be cheap. Uh, yeah. And then if if somebody's doing some weird, like, jank combo or something like that mm-hmm. with artifacts or something, just throw this in there. Yeah, I think, like, so... It's great. This is kind of... I mean, I think this is modern side war, too. Uh, mm-hmm. There's enough decks that this affects that that's going to be important. Yeah. So I mean, what KCI combo would yeah. get owned by this? Yeah, that's my that's my mind. Uh, um, KCI combo, Karns die to this. Yeah. Ugin's die to this. Yeah, Eldrazi or uh, yeah. Tron. Eldrazi's out of this too. Um, um, so I think this is. Well, it's not awesome. There are some better, better options. Mm-hmm. Those decks are troublesome enough that if you're a deck that has a slot. And in your sideboard, I think Crater Maker is an okay answer for certain things because it's so cheap. Yeah, and especially if you're going for, like, like if you're just a fun modern player and you're like, oh, I kind of want to try Goblins in Modern. Yeah. This is great in that deck. It's perfect because it does, it hits uh, low-to-the-ground creatures, so mm-hmm. it's going to hit things like Snapcasters and stuff like that, other opposing, like, yeah. red deck win style things, and... It really does hose any colorless combos or anything like that. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's just a great utility card in mm-hmm. my mind. Right. And that's the only reason. I don't think it main decks really anywhere except Not necessarily, for no. Maybe the, the the standard Goblins deck, but I don't, maybe. I don't know yet. You're already sacking a lot of Goblins. I'd want a two drop to stick around. That's fair. Because a lot of the one drops yeah, um, yeah. sack, and they have sack outlets, too. That's fair. So, I don't know. Um Oh, this yeah. does open you up, though, to do a lot of cool stuff by, like, swinging in with it and then sacking it. Sure. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it's interesting stuff. I think it's a fine card. Anyway. Um, what are the cards? Talked about. Is that everything? Yeah, those are all I want to talk about. Real cool. quick, we got a Chromatic Lantern reprint, so that will yep. be in standard. Pretty uh, stoked about that. I think it's interesting what they're doing with lands. Because they... What do you mean? They were very purposeful in saying... <laughs> that a lot of these decks are so easy to play your uh your two mana decks your yeah um like blue black control etc mm-hmm. etc cetera, et cetera. uh because mana fixing is so prevalent at mm-hmm. least it was last season mm-hmm. uh but they have they haven't really made it harder to play any kind of colors, which is fine. And in a Ravnica set, that's what you I want. I was going to say, in a Ravnica set, I don't know that you... I just think it's interesting. They pointed that out as being an issue. Now, granted, the season's about to change. We are about to lose about a bunch of cards. Lot, yeah. um, so, uh, will it be a problem going forward? Probably not. You want mana fixing kind that's, of always? Yeah. So, I don't know. I just think it's interesting. It is interesting, certainly. Um, I I do think, like you mentioned, in a Ravnica set, it's dual mm-hmm. color by nature. Yep. So you're going to have to have color fixing. Um, this does open the gate for three color decks, and even more than that, if people want to, because there is going to be a lot of fixing. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, that's the thing. Is uh, And so, but I mean, generally, two color is going to be where people are at, I would guess. Um, that being said. Yeah, I think they make it lucrative. Uh, not yet. Um, <laughs> no, I want to. Not yet. <laughs> it's so cool. Um, so uh, really quick, some... Before we get into that, this is was my plan segue. Okay. Uh, what kind of archetypes do you see shaking out from the spoilers we have now, or the cards yeah. we've already got in the pool? Um, so I definitely think uh, pretty clearly there's going to be goblins like we talked about. Um, mm-hmm. I think that could be a thing. I think a token deck is going to be coming around. Um, really? S- yes, I do. So March, obviously, uh, the Thousand-Eyed Dude, I think, mm-hmm. the uh, Amara. There's just a lot of like little token generators, and we still have all those sapperlings in Dominaria, and so I to be able to convoke out March of the Multitudes and stuff mm-hmm. like that, it will be easier than normal. Um, I think it would be Abzan. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that would splash things like a Assassin's Trophy and stuff like that, just sure. for like actual value. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just think there could be something there i'm not saying it's going to be amazing or tier one by any means but i do think there is something there for that i just don't i want because we have all that sweet tech i wanted tokens to work for a while i just don't think it gets around cards like chain whirler and that's the hard part um, for sure and uh deafening 
thing. Right. I do think there's a lot of hate for it. Um, and that's going to be yeah. why I think it stays like tier two or below. Uh, but I do think it actually, if it wasn't for the removal, I think it would be a great deck. Um, it's just like, there's a little bit too much, but I do think yeah. that there, there's something there for it now. Um, in my mind, uh, also think control got a buff, a couple buffs. Um, <laughs> We'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Control looks good. Um, control looks pretty sweet. <laughs> uh, America Control looks. I mean, whenever Ravnica is around, America Control kind of gets a, a little boost. I yeah. think it's it's got some potential to trend up. We need a little bit more action from Red. Yeah, but I we need s- a little bit more just like direct burn stuff in my mind. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I think we're a little bit low on the burn, but I mean, we've got some good cards for it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm stoked to see that happen. Uh, I also think there will be uh, mid range just graveyard decks, um, right? And they could be they could range from green black. I think green black's obviously the core, mm-hmm. um, but I do think they'll splash other colors certainly. Uh, yeah. Some blue, maybe some white. Uh, but there's going to be some interesting sort of graveyard interaction going on. That's sweet. Yeah, um, <laughs> card's awesome. Yeah. Um, so again, kind of generalized strategies a little bit more at this point, just yeah. because we don't have a ton, but. Uh, that's kind of what I'm feeling. Yeah. Uh, as as far as limited shaping up right now, it's it, archetypes for Ravnica sets are kind of weird to talk about for limited because they're they're there. Yeah. Uh, just already in the colors. So I mean, uh, white green convoke is probably the front runner in my mind. You, you have, think so? Yeah, because you have a lot of potential up and down the curve. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. You got sweet bombs. You've got pretty good uncommons. Um, this is a good common. Mm-hmm. Um, so, it just turbos out stuff so easily. Yeah, so. I mean it's it, it looks good. Um, white, I think white, white, uh, red, mentor red, yeah, is, yeah. is going to be a really good front runner. Also, yeah, that's also sweet. Um, blue black tends not to be quite as good in my mind in draft because it's much more of like the controlly tempo color. Yeah, you're kind of you're banking on getting more cards in yeah. that archetype than yeah. you always do. So again, that kind of goes back to the don't force your your. Uh, your strategies like you don't want to go blue black just first pack um <laughs> because you want to because you yeah. feel like it um, um but th- th- that's that's all we can really see for now yeah. in terms of deck archetypes in my mind yeah, we're low on spoilers at this point, yeah for so. sure um at this stage everyone wants to talk about everyone deck builds with them already which uh just fine some <laughs> youtubers and podcasters will do that and uh, we are no different. So, um, before this went on, uh, actually, we kind of teased this last episode. Yeah, we did. Where we thought there was potential for a bug control show. Yeah. So, we wrote down, just as it stands right now, if this was all they were giving us for guilds, if it went live tomorrow, <laughs> uh, we have a deck. Now, that's not like... It's a rough deck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, slots... Yeah need to be shifted and taken there's a lot of play sets of things that in a control deck i don't know about yeah um and And there's also some cards that we could swap out now that are like playable maybe playable but we don't know yet there's there's a lot of uh chance to mess around with it yeah um but the the shell is there anyway and really it's all thanks to underrealm lich in our minds this card's so good Um, (laughs) so being a mid-range deck you want to have that kind of mid-game card Mm -hmm. or engine point that says i'm taking control of the game answer it if you can if not i'm gonna run away with it yep and which to us is that excuse me is that thing uh it's the potential to be unkillable with indestructible it's an engine to look through your deck to find you more cards to just press your boot into your opponent uh i think it's perfect I do too. It also has graveyard interaction, which mm-hmm. this deck wants. Right. Um, and so for that reason, it seems really good. Yeah. Uh, on top of that, as sort of a finisher, and this is pseudo finisher right now, uh, as we already kind of hinted at Dream Eater, um, I believe it's just a two or three of currently. Yeah, we have it as um, a three of. We already talked about the card. It's not an amazing finisher, but it has a lot of utility, especially yeah. in this deck with Surveil yeah. um, I think, and Tempo Play. Yeah, in, in this deck, being a mid-range deck, that Tempo Play is the big is the big factor. Yeah. Um, it's 4-3 body. Mm-hmm. You're, not, you're not using it 
you are using it to swing, but your idea isn't this is going to be my scary beater. No. This is your tempo play. Yeah. And, uh, oh boy, what a big one. It sort of tips the scale back in your favor. Right. Uh, digs you out of some right. situations as well. That's why I was weighing it unfairly yeah. bef- at the top of the episode in my mind, but the more I think about it, the like it goes into less decks than I think it could. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? But it is still pretty sweet. Sure. Um, Assassin's Trophy, clearly four of <laughs> It's just... Yeah. So good. I yeah, mean, we not we, enough good things. To uh, be said. We are losing fatal push, so yeah, things need to take its spot. Assassin's Trophy looks like uh, the best option to do that. I would agree. Yep. Uh, um, I love that they fit a. They have fit. They fit. Hmm. English is weird. Uh, they put a removal spell uh, in the set, thusly removing another potential removal spell card, but took it away from blue control decks yeah yeah took it away from american control decks Mm -hmm. because it's got green uh well green black but whatever like other decks got to splash for fatal push (laughs) or just had black in there because this is much more focused on that color combo yeah you don't less decks will get to play Mm -hmm. assassin's trophy than played fatal push which i like yep um while removal is super necessary for any balanced magic format uh i just think it's better yeah um, another couple cards that I want to talk about, just briefly. Uh, Thought Erasure mm-hmm. is hand destruction. Seems really yep. solid. It also has a surveil uh, synergy, mm-hmm. which, again, with this deck, we want. Yeah. Um, That's the thing we're playing with is we're using surveil, bleep, surveil <laughs> like that scry effect. Yes. To get through to find your answers, all that stuff. That's exactly it. Uh, chugging through mm-hmm. the deck. Um, we also have Narc Amoeba as incidental value with all yeah. of these surveil triggers. Uh, being able to just throw out a 1-1 with flying. Uh, can block you, keep you alive, yeah. get you to that mid-game point. Seems like a great way to do it. Yeah, you're going to cast um, it for free. Why not? One of the older cards that we wanted to put in, Vraska's Contempt. Bingo. Just really good, solid yep. removal. I think it, re- it remains premium removal. I think it remains the best, uh, again, outside of Fatal Push. Yep. Exile and Gain 2 seems pretty good. Uh, so a card that we're like a little unsure of. Uh, <laughs> yes, we're very... Very unsure of. Uh, Whisper Agent... It's a three drop three two with flash, uh, mm-hmm. and it surveils one. It's synergistic with the deck, right. and I like that it's a flash creature because you can leave up counters, you can leave up whatever you need to. This seems okay, uh, not great. Again, right. we're we don't have a lot of the set to work with right now, so this is just a potential. Right, um, it's placeholder, but it seems pretty solid. Uh, mm-hmm. Reign of Notion seems great. Yes, in this deck, this is um, uh, read the bones light. Yes, basically. basically. Uh, so for one, a blue and a black, you surveil two, draw two cards, and deals two damage yep. to you. Uh, just seems absolutely fantastic. It's exactly what you want for a deck like this. Yep. Uh, we also have opt in there. Um, yep. Basic card draw. What am I missing? Uh, I'm sure a few things. We have Syncopate. Syncopate. Um, two of those right now. Two status statues. Yeah, this card's interesting. So this card is... It, it, it's got more what's the word applications throughout the game than some other cards so at one you have status target creature is plus one plus one death touch so your narc amoebas can turn into removal spells uh your other we just said in whispering agents turn into removal potentially uh and then statue or yeah statue is literally just removal yep so seems pretty good yeah there you go um it fits the curve fairly nicely as yeah. well because uh statue just being one and then statue no Statues? Sta- status, status is one. Is one. <laughs> Sorry, Statues. I was reading in reverse order. Yes, I did too. Um, but you can also play both if you need to. Yeah. Um, pretty sweet. Um, so we also, another older card, uh, Moldrotha? Yeah, that's a question mark, but I like it. Just kind of works, though. It's just a good card. Right? I mean, we're going to have a lot of stuff in the graveyard with all these surveil triggers, uh, and being able yep. to exploit that seems great. Oh, yes. Uh, as oh, a yes. two of not yeah. as the yeah board. so Moldroth is 6-6 six, six for 6 but it is legendary so yeah um, it would be great to put out yeah and it kind of you know lich dream eater Moldrotha. that's kind of nice yeah in terms of like bomb curve. trying to read your writing you have such terrible handwriting oh yeah don't um, even try this is my notebook sorry do uh, your take your own notes maybe <laughs> prepare a little bit and you can have your own my bad um, with a sticker on it anyway yeah from there None though uh the the land support is actually pretty good right now. Also, the land support is great. Hinterland Harbor is already in Dominaria, mm-hmm. but we're also getting Overgrown Tomb as well as Watery Grave. Yep. 
Uh, from there, I mean, that's a good portion of your lands mm-hmm. right there, but you also have basic lands, and then we have guild gates in there. I mean, not that you have to use them, but, like, they're not good. No, um, don't, you don't construct. I don't think you should, nope. but... Uh, don't brew with guild gates. Yeah, um, that's that's kind of the basis for this deck. It's mid-rangey, yeah. it's graveyard interaction, uh, it's very engine-heavy with the lich. Um, sure. I just, I really dig it. We're speculating on it. I'm not saying it's going to be amazing. Yeah, it's yet, like but. it's in the infancy. Um, it's missing some very important. some teeth. Yeah, I would agree. The finish, uh, yeah, the the finisher is a question mark. So you chug through a lot of stuff. Yes, obviously. Yes, but uh, are your bombs strong enough to take the game? That's the question. Because we're working with a lot of four bodies, and Muldroth is six, but mm-hmm. it's a, only one card. But. We will continue to update you on this deck list as we go through and we get more spoilers. Or we'll trash it if it looks like it won't work. Yes. Either way. (laughs) Um, So again, uh, we're just kind of following Guilds of Ravnica as we continue on with spoiler season. So we'll continue to update you guys as we uh, learn more. Yeah. That's kind of where we're at right now. Some new spoilers might have already come out. Uh, Yeah, they might have. Um, I'm just going to peek while you do the next part. Oh, yeah. Question of the week. I forgot to ask. Uh, So we're going to ask it this week. It's just what do you think we need to see in Guilds of Ravnica? That's all. Or what are you excited about? What are you excited about? Um, Why did I? But we, of course, have our Cracker Pack sponsored by Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles with our goal cards. Will? Uh, Leonin War Leader. Uh, Supreme Phantom. Uh... Oh, right. Just get your pack. No, 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 no. Shut up. We're just seeing. We're doing it live. Because maybe. No. Okay. (laughs) Why not? Wouldn't that be cool? It would have been. Before, I mean, it goes live Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. But whatever. (laughs) All right. Three, two, one. No. (laughs) I mean, I like Palaka Worm. Uh, for draft. <laughs> uh, dismissive Pyromancer. Uh, yeah. this back kind of blues. Um, actually, no, it's pretty good. Um, so Palaka Worm is just a huge beater. Sweet. Psychic Corrosion, also really good in draft. And then Regal Bloodlord is oh fantastic as well. This pack sucks. Oh, wow. I think I'd just take Palaka Worm because it's just a giant bomb, though. Um, not really my way of playing, but it's really sweet. So yeah, I have a lightning strike. My un, <laughs> my, sorry, my rare. You saw dismissive pyromancer. Discard a card, draw a card, or uh, sacrifice dismissive pyromancer. Deals four damage to target creature. It's a two two for two. That's honestly not good enough. Um, so for removal in the pack, we have lightning strike and take vengeance. Both really great removal. One is obviously better than the other. Yeah. Um, and then there's really nothing else that you turn one. <laughs> Goblin Instigator is in here. That's kind of a nice... I like that card. It's good. Skeleton Archer. But again, no turn one, really. No. Um, the obvious choice is Lightning Strike. Yeah. I mean, Pretty clearly. Yeah. There's, it's a good card. I love it. Lightning Strike's awesome. Hope to wheel the Instigator, maybe. For sure. Um, but yeah. Um, so... That's going to wrap up this episode, guys. Yeah. Uh, it went a little longer than I expected, but hopefully you guys enjoyed cool. it. Uh, we are going to get out of here, though. My name is Kevin. My name's Will. This has been It Resolves.